Hey ho, and what do you know? Welcome everybody to another edition of the Balkan Up Podcast. I'm your host, Alex, as always. I know you're probably looking around going like, where the heck are you? I just moved to area undisclosed, that's all I will say. But uh, with that said, this is the long-awaited episode of how I'm going to fix the Los Angeles Angels. Now, this was very much a tough one to do because I had two options, either a, I could do a complete rebuild, which is what I started to do. But as time went on, you saw Tyler Anderson, Hunter Renfro, and others start signing with the Angels. It became very clear that was not going to be a very feasible option, nor even realistic for me to pull off to make it somewhat believable. So I decided to go a different route and seeing, can I make the Angels competitive next year? Is there a way to do it? I know Artie Moreno is on his way out. You got Shohei Otani on the last year of his contract. You have Mike Trout, who desperately needs to go back to a playoff game. And, you know, there's not a lot of hope right there in Anaheim. So the question really is, how do you salvage the situation? Well, I'm going to tell you, put myself in more so Artie Marino's chair, and I had to make some tough decisions. And whether it be from a management standpoint, whether it be from, you know, a baseball ops standpoint, whether it be from a player personnel standpoint, it wasn't easy. But I have found five moves that I think can instantly help turn around the Angels. Now, am I guaranteeing we're going to go to the playoffs next year? No, I'm not. Am I going to sit sit here and say, I think we're going in the right direction? Absolutely. I think we are. Uh, I'm very proud of this one. Um, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like and subscribe to the video, especially if you like the video. Make sure you hit that like button. I know it's about like 60% of you aren't even subscribed to the channel. What the heck are you doing? Subscribe. I got a bunch more content on the way including how I'm fixing other teams. I think the next one might be the Oakland A's. I'm not sure after the Sean Murphy trade if we want to go that route, but their team I'm looking at, the Marlins are another one I'm kind of looking at as well. Um, I kind of want to finish up the Guardians and see how can we make them a World Series contender without having to break Mr. Dolan, Larry Dolan, well, Paul Dolan, Larry and Paul's bank. So I don't I don't know if there's a way to do it. and. And our team I want to look at, the Detroit Tigers, because I got some friends who are Tiger fans. I got some family who are Tiger fans. And uh, uh, yeah, I just don't agree with what you're doing. But we'll talk about that in our point. But here we go. It This is how I would fix the Los Angeles Angels, a.k.a. the team with the, that needs the most help to even get back to being competitive. Hey, buddy, help me. All right, let's address the elephant in the room, Shohei Otani. Guys, I want to keep him. I really do. He is a generational talent. He's a once-in-a-lifetime talent. He's going to be a perennial MVP every year because he's a two-way guy who can hit 30 home runs and dominate in the rotation. I don't think he wants to stay in Anaheim. I think his plan is to go to the Dodgers soon. And if not, I think he wants to stay on the West Coast. So I narrowed it down to a couple teams. I don't think the Mariners would match up very well in terms of like paying him and willing to pay the prospects right now, nor do I think they really have the wherewithal to really do it right now. Plus, I think besides ownership of the team, I don't think the Angels would ever hand him over to a divisional rival. Then you have the Padres who just gave up everything to get, you know, Juan Soto. Don't think that's going to happen. I did think of the idea of training for Fernando Tatis Jr., but I didn't really entertain it long simply because it didn't make sense to me. Then you come to the Dodgers, and that they have so much depth in the minors that's major league ready and just roadblocked. And truthfully, they need a pitcher and they could use a guy like Shohei Otani in that lineup and they'll know how to use them. 
And it's widely reported already, like we had in our winter meetings, you know, expectations where I said the Dodgers are going to be fairly quiet. Yes, you got Noah Syndergaard, good job. But they really haven't done much of note because they want to go after Shohei Otani. So here's the trade. Jacob Amaya, a defensive shortstop who I'm not really high on like a lot of people are. I mean, I don't think his bat's going to translate, but I think he's going to be a very good defender. I think his ceiling is in Droughton Simmons. I think Angels fans probably would take that in some cases. Then you got Maddox Bruns, who I love. I think he's got elite stuff. I think he needs to develop a little bit more as a pitcher, but I think he can be a two or a three in the rotation, maybe even an ace if everything pans out, but the stuff translates into a top of the rotation guy. I'm going to skip Michael Bush in a minute for a minute here and end on him. Then you got Gretzural, Gretzural, I, I can never pronounce his name. I'm sorry. You want guys who are going to help in the back end of that bullpen, young, controllable guys. That is Gretzural. I really believe he can be a guy that can become the closer for the Angels. I like him a lot. Um, he's been okay with the Dodgers, maybe in more of a defined role. He takes his game to another level, or he's just another reliever. But he's a guy that throws 100, and he's young. You want to what? Take the chance on that. Then you got Ryan Pepio as a starter. He'd be a guy that fit in right away into the rotation. Obviously, he's not going to fill the Shohei Otani role, but you've signed guys like Tyler Anderson. You have other guys as well that can fill that void and just be a stable rotation. All we're trying to do is have a stable, consistent rotation. As long as you can do that and you can score the runs, you have a chance. And you have a back end of the bullpen that can be dominant. Now you're starting to see how I'm trying to build this team. The last piece is Michael Bush, who I think can be a 20-20, 30-30 guy in the right scenario. I think he's going to be a second baseman at the major league level. I'd immediately pencil him in as the second baseman for the Los Angeles Angels in this trade. And I think he'd be a rookie of the year candidate. I think he could really step in and be a guy that makes Angel fans very happy with the trade. And if this is the trade they go with, it's not a bad return. I mean, they could get a little bit more, but you know, I'm trying to win right now. The situation is not to get the most for Shohei Otani. If that were the case, I'd be on the phone with the Cardinals and Guardians if I want the most. That's who I'm talking to. I got to be realistic. He's not signed long term there. You're only going to have limited teams. Yes, the Dodgers get Shohei Otani. And I think it's a great fit for all parties. I really do. And I think you get a Michael Bush in there. I mean, you could get one of the other top prospects they have as well. And you could look really, really good in this trade. And it could work out for you in the long run. But Shohei Otani, I would trade to the Los Angeles Dodgers. First thing I would do. Because truth is, he isn't going to sign that long-term extension. Secondly, I get on the phone and I'd be calling Chris Antonetti of the Cleveland Guardians. And I'd be talking about Ahmed Rosario. Look, I'm not getting any of the shortstops in this free agency. I'm not paying big bucks, but I want a consistent shortstop. And if you're really going to sit here and tell me Gio Urshela, who's barely played shortstop in the majors, he's primarily a third baseman. If you're telling me he's going to be my shortstop, again, this is where the Angels continue to make mistakes. They just plug and play guys at positions that may not be natural to them. And then they take a step back. Screw it. The plan here is get Anthony Rendon to be my DH. I don't give a damn. I'm not moving that contract. The only way I'm ever going to is if Rendon can pick it up offensively, make him the DH. Just do it. Protect him as much as possible. Let him hit. And if he stinks, hey, you have a bad contract that you can't get out of. It happens at least we're LA. Then you got Gio at third, who plays good defensively at third. He can hit. And now you put in a high hustle type of guy 
like Ahmed Rosario, yes, he's in the last year of his deal. Yes, next year shortstop class is weak. Yes, you probably are going to have to pay for Ahmed Rosario. You know what? I'm not complaining about that. Ahmed Rosario is a capable shortstop who I think can be a leadoff number two hitter. Yes, he's streaky, but his hustle on the field is something that is infectious. The Guardians rave about it. Jose Ramirez loves him. It'd be a tough thing for the Guardians to do, but they got, you know, Gabriel Arias. They've got Brian Rocchio. They got Andres Jimenez, who they can move to short. They got Tyler Freeman. They've got so many guys. They got to get rid of the log jam. So with this, I give the Guardians Kyron Paris, another shortstop, who they may let go of in a year or leave unprotected for the Rule 5 draft. He really has not lived up to his potential He's fallen out of favor, but maybe Cleveland can fix him. But the main guy I'd be willing to give is Sam Bachman. Now, it's a tough thing for me to sell, but that's what Antonetti is going to want. And I'm willing to do it because, again, I'm trying to compete right now. Rosario's presence at the top of a lineup gets me in position to win right now. So Ahmed Rosario would be the guy I would target. Just saying, it's a tough sell because you're trading a top prospect for him. But for a guy like Rosario, it's probably worth it. All right, so the next step is I sign three different players. Number one, I sign Araldis Chapman. I know a lot of people are going to be like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? Let me continue. Corey Kluber and Brandon Drury. Okay, here's the point of doing this. The first two are going to be one-year contracts. A role this Chapman is going to be boom or bust no matter where he goes. I don't really have a closer. If Graturol turns into the closer, great. But worst case, I have Chapman. And let's say he returns to form and maybe I'm not competitive. I got a decent trade chip. Awesome. Great. Move them. Best case, we talk about a small extension because we're competing. We have a closer. Gratural becomes the setup guy or vice versa. And we discuss long-term. It's boom or bust. One-year deal, it's not going to hurt. One-year deals with a guy like Araldis Chapman, if my goal is to compete, is worth it. Same thing goes for Corey Kluber. Kluber is consistent. You know what you're getting out of him. I need a guy that can eat innings as a starter or go to innings as a reliever. Yes, I think he's transitioning into the twilight of his career where he's going to be more of a two-inning reliever, maybe a spot starter, a guy who's just not going to eat up innings like he used to, but he can when you need him to. More importantly, I'm signing this guy to be a presence for the young pitcher's like Suarez, like Detmers, like Co Tyler Anderson, like the guys that they are developing in that system. And now you have a guy who's been a two-time Cy Young winner, who's been to the World Series, who understands what it takes on a day-to-day -day basis and was so much of a role model for the young pitchers of Cleveland and really has been the beginning of what they've built from their pitching staff on, it could be something of an infectious thing for the LA pitchers to go through, which is what I need. I'm building off of pitching. And then Brandon Drury is simple. You need a guy who's a super utility, and that's Drury. He can play a little bit of the outfield. He can play all over the infield. He can play first base against lefties when I don't want Jared Walsh to face a lefty anymore. Besides, I don't know if I want to move forward with Jared Walsh anymore. That's another story. But again, Drury also plays third. This also allows me to not play Rendon on the field. I don't want Rendon on the field. Just have him hit, see if he can find his form again. If not, it's an albatross of a contract and it sucks. That's the game for you. But if you sign these three guys, you're getting versatility, leadership, and upside. That's what you're getting here. 
And that's what you need. You need to do something bold to get the ball going, you know, for your organization. I mean, this is more than just competing. This is about turning things around for a franchise that is completely stagnant. All right. So I do want to put a note here as well that I did have as well to entertain all offers for uh, Luis Rangifo. I, I think it, they're not going to trade him. I'd entertain it. I probably wouldn't trade him. He's another utility guy that can play a little bit all over the place. Had a great year last year. I think his trade value will never be higher. I'd entertain offers. I'd only trade him for maybe a, another starring pitcher or maybe even a good first baseman if one became available, but I wouldn't trade him most likely. But in terms of manager, I would hire either Craig Council and wait out that scenario. Obviously, we're moving forward with Phil Nevin. I don't agree with that. I'd fire him in two seconds. But the other guy I'd look at is Walt Weiss of the Atlanta Braves. Now, Craig Council is one of the better managers in Major League Baseball. He has guided the Brewers to multiple winning seasons, multiple playoff appearances. I mean, this guy knows how to work a rotation of bullpen. That's what I'm trying to go for here. That's my ideal scenario. I don't think the Brewers are going to let him go. I mean, unless if the David Stearns thing, a little bit of a teaser here, if the Stearns thing affects him in any way, we'll find out. But I don't know. I, I just don't think the Brewers would want to mess with it until they fully rebuild. And they're not fully rebuilding yet. So I would wait out a year. If we're going to go with Phil Nevin, we'll wait it out, see if counsel becomes available. And if he does, go ahead and get him. Now, Walt Weiss is an intriguing one to me. Now, everyone knows, yes, he coached four years in Colorado and he was very subpar. I'm not blaming him on that. Yes, he had the offense. He didn't have a lick of pitching. Instead, we're building around pitching. We're doing it the opposite way. We're going to build it with effective pitching, great bullpen work. We're going to do this the correct way. And we've seen what Walt Weiss has done as the bench coach for the Braves. He's helped bring up these young guys and been an integral part of that team. And I think another thing, if I could try to get a package deal with them, I try to get Ron Washington to come to LA. I do everything I can to get him and Ron Washington together. Because at that point now, you're about developing the young talent that we have coming through the minors. And now that we're building it, now we're building something special, something that can be competitive and yeah, it might be in the twilight of Mike Trout's career, but damn it, if we can't trade Mike Trout, we're going to get Mike Trout back to the playoffs because God damn it, he deserves it. And hopefully we can make a very serious run at a World Series. And lastly, you go get David Stearns away from the Brewers. Now he stepped down as president of baseball ops. So... Now the question is, is the whole Mets thing going to happen in a year? Is he going to walk away from the Brewers? Is he just fine with what he's doing? I mean, the guy's been a part of multiple organizations in the Astros and having some time in Cleveland as well. He knows, and, and primarily he's from the Astros rebuild. He knows how to build a competitive team. His pitching track record in terms of developing with the Brewers is outstanding. I want that. Again, we're going for building around pitching. We're doing it the way Houston won it. We're going to fight fire with fire. And when we find hitters, we're going to keep them. This is the way we're building it here. Pepio, I think, can be a middle of the rotation starter. Maddox Bruns with the right staff can become an ace, I believe. We're going to perfect our scouting process for the draft. We're going to perfect you know, our development systems. So the guys that we currently have, the Reed Detmers of the world, the Jose Suarez's, we're going to make them better than what they currently are to where we have multiple guys who can be effective starters. And then we have veterans like Tyler Anderson who can be effective for us. Now we're starting to build for the future. That's why I'm going and getting David Stearns because he knows how to do it. Plus, 
I mean, at some point, I'm going to be able to give him a bigger checkbook than he ever had in Milwaukee. And we see how that worked with a guy like Andrew Friedman and others. Those guys who go from small market to big market, who have more resources to scout, who have more resources to sign players, end up doing a lot better. We're trying to model you know, what the Dodgers did for an Andrew Friedman, but you're bringing in a guy who understands how to beat Houston. That's the goal right now. How many years is it going to take? I would hope it would take a year. Honestly, I think we can be competitive and by next year with the moves that we've made, and we'll go over the line here at the end, but I think we can be competitive by the end of the year. I think we can, you know, compete for the division the following year with more resources and more hype around the team. And then maybe in the third year, definitely become front runners with the Mariners and the Astros. I mean, I think we can surpass the Astros by year three and be right there with the Mariners. That is the goal. That's where we need to be. You got to get out of this stagnation. And David Stearns is the guy that I would hire immediately to start getting us out of stagnation and to get Mike Trout where he belongs in the gosh darn playoffs. Enough is enough. I don't care what it costs. You go get him. You go get David Stearns. All right, so there you have it. So recap real quick. I want to give you the line because I'm reading it right off here because I had it all written down. So here's what you got. Leading off at second base, We got Michael Bush. Bang second, we got Ahmed Rosario at short. Mike Trout bats third, hitting in center field. Then you got Taylor Ward out in left field, maybe even Renfro in left. I mean, Ward and Renfro are hitting back-to-back 4-5, so you can interchange them in terms of the outfield, depending on what you want. At third base, we got Gio Urshela batting sixth. At first base, we have a platoon of Jared Walsh and Brandon Drury. You see what I'm doing here? I'm playing the advantages now. Then you got Anthony Rendon. Maybe you have Rangifo uh, as well, DH as well. Uh, maybe you could even put a guy like Bush occasionally at DH because Rangifo can play some good defense as well. And then batting ninth, your catcher, Logan Oha. I mean, one through nine, that's not a bad lineup. That's a, that's a lineup that should be competitive. Then you go to the rotation. Tyler Anderson as our ace. Okay, could be better, but all right. Patrick Sandoval, who's been pretty good the last season and looks to be, you know, good two or three in a rotation, so I'll take it. Then you got Ryan Pepio, who I said, big part of the trade. I can just plug and play him. Jose Suarez, who did very well last year. And Reed Detmers. Now, you do have Kluber. If you have too many lefties, you could interchange one of the lefties and make a trade for a righty. Maybe I call the Marlins. I don't know. I mean, a Taylor Ward to the Marlins type deal would make a little bit of sense to get our pitcher in there. I mean, that's something I just thought of. I didn't really, you know, it's a thought. Maybe you could go out and get a Pablo Lopez or a Jesus Lazardo and trade Ward to them because they want an outfielder guy. Maybe you can play some center. I know Ward's more of a right fielder, but maybe you can play some center and maybe that could work out. I mean, it would make a lot of sense, especially if they threw in a piece that kind of offsets the loss of Ward. But again, going into their bullpen now, you got Ryan Tapera, who didn't have a great year last year. He was just okay. Aaron Loop, who's always an effective lefty out of the bullpen. Graturol, who I got in the Shohei deal, and Araldis Chapman. Right there, you have a team that should, that should on paper, be about a 500 team. And with a couple of lucky bounces and a couple of, you know, breakthroughs and good signings and stuff like that, it would be a competitive team in the AL West. It really wouldn't take a lot. I mean, maybe if you swap out Ward for others from the Marlins and get a pitcher in there, more of an ace type, maybe a Pablo Lopez. I mean, I probably wouldn't do a Ward for Lopez straight up swap, but if one of the other younger ones with more control is available, who I think could be an ace and put him behind Anderson maybe and let him develop like an Edward Cabrera type, something like that, 
And then plus, 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 okay, now we're kind of talking here. But I think this is a team that can be very competitive if it wants to be. Again, Artie Moreno really, thank God he's selling the team. But maybe you're better off with the devil you know than the devil you don't know. Then again, it may probably not get much worse than Artie Moreno, who's done over a billion dollars on free agents and still can't get to the playoffs. But at the end of the day, you know, that's how I'd fix the Angels. I think uh, this would make them very competitive. I think it could get them potentially into that wild card chase, which that's all it takes. Get to that wild card and let's go from there. You never know. And you have a guy like Mike Trout who knows how to rise to the occasion. So as long as you got the pitching to eat the innings, the bullpen to shut it down, and a guy like Mike Trout with pieces around him to make some noise, you never know. Maybe that rally monkey magic with the Angels can come back one day. Maybe as soon as next year. Anywho, if you enjoyed what I said, make sure you like and subscribe to the video. And if you like the pod, please subscribe to the pod. Uh, tell me what your thoughts are below in the comments. Please let me know what you guys think. If you guys think I'm crazy with this, hey, more freedom to you. Tell me how you would improve the Angels. Are they even salvageable at this point? Would you blow it up? Would you spend more? Would you trade Shohei? Would you trade Trout? What would you do if you were in my shoes in terms of fixing the Angels? But again, I hope you guys enjoyed and make sure uh, to subscribe. We got plenty of content on the way. Until next time, guys, I'm out.